Wearable gadgets let us obsess over how well we sleep, how many calories we burn, even how fast our hearts beat. But what if your boss was also poring over that data? Some companies are starting to fit their stuff out with wearable devices, hoping to figure out how to make them healthier or more productive. So we run a predictive analytics company, so our whole thing is about collecting, trying to understand and predict stuff using data. And we have all these people who are interested in data, and why wouldn't we try and make them healthier, wealthier and happier? So um, we said, right, we're going to do a crazy project where we're going to take everyone to the most sophisticated healthcare place in the whole of London, which is a place called CHHP. We're going to get everyone to track their happiness um, on an app, and we're going to track you know, their sleep patterns as well, and all that kind of stuff. And the idea was to try and figure out kind of what is the status quo as an organisation, and then how do we make everyone you know, five times, ten times more efficient. So join the, join the company in January. Uh, we were very start up back then, and Rob sort of said to me, OK, right, we're going to track everything you do. So I want to know how much sleep you've had, what you ate, how much activity you're doing, through knowing and, and tracking that you'd, I don't know, potentially had way too many calories that day or that your sleep was only, your sleep quality was only 65%, has a major impact on how you then perform, but, but from a psychological aspect. So if you know that you've done, that you've only had 65% sleep quality, you won't do as well, I don't think. As the FT's employment correspondent, I wondered what it would feel like for an employee to be tracked like this, and also whether the data really would be any use to managers. So for a week I tried it out, strapping on a fitness monitor, a sleep monitor, even something to measure my brain waves. OK, it's day one of the wearables experiment. I'm going to try and be the model employee today, so I slept for eight hours last night. Although my watch tells me only six of them were good quality hours, which I think I'd rather not know. Day three of the wearables experiment, and today we're going to look at the various pitfalls of using wearable technology in the workplace. Here's a good example. My watch claims I didn't go to sleep till 3am last night. That's not true, but will my manager believe me? Chris Brower, an academic at Goldsmiths who runs studies on wearables in the workplace and has provided me with the wearables, thinks all of this data could be a goldmine for managers. Management science has been long discussed as a discipline and, and this, this growth of wearable technologies that promises a new form of management science more akin to sports science where a manager will be able to have their dashboard, they'll be able to look into their workforce, they'll be able to see performance and productivity trajectories amongst their employees, lines of flight that will show them when they're going to have a good day or a bad day and when they got that big pitch meeting coming up that afternoon and a big contract to win and they have to decide who it is that goes in there just like a football manager isn't going to put an injured player on the pitch a manager operating in any kind of organization can optimize their resources within the field of this management science that emerges from wearable tech. But office work is tough to measure well. Simon Hall at PA Consulting says wearables are more likely to take off in other sectors first. Where we think it's very useful is in high um, impact environments where the individual that's wearing the technology either has to perform a task in a way where uh, it's sensitive to having both of your hands available, where it's a high risk environment like a power station or something similar to that, or where the individual is relied upon heavily to react in a certain way and their own well-being, their physiology is important to the task. So that could be in high-end sports or team games um, or team sports as well. Even if companies did find use for all of this data, would workers be willing to provide it? According to a survey by PwC, 40% of people said they would wear a workplace wearable, and that rises to just over half if they knew it would be used to improve their well-being at work. But in my week as a tracked worker, I found myself obsessing about what my boss would think about my sleep and activity patterns, as well as trying to figure out ways to boost my stats. So I forgot to turn the Misfit on again today to record my cycle. It's pouring with rain outside, so I'm not going to go for a job. Luckily, some FT people play football on Friday lunchtime. So I'm going to get John to do it for me. My colleague John's football session on the final day of our wearables experiment really helped bump up my stats for activity. But everything else was slipping by then. I was sleeping less, and my mood ring was showing that as that happened, I became more stressed. And at the office, I got a mixed reaction from my colleagues when I asked them if they would be willing to give their data to our bosses. It's just, uh, it's uh, an evasion of my, uh, 
my privacy and my dignity, obviously, right? I have a contractual relationship with my employer. I give you the work, you give me the money. And outside of that, you know, you as my employer can go to hell. How's that? I am like one of these sort of quantified self people, all about the self-improvement. So that side of it definitely appeals to me. Uh, the sharing with your employer. I mean, clearly I'm just like the model employee, love the FT, trust them completely, so nothing could possibly negatively come from that. But um, I do think there's a point, you know, when questions maybe start getting asked about when your work rate drops, was it because of X, Y or Z, then I think that's maybe getting a little bit too, uh, too far. I think it's a terrible idea <laughs> because somebody's always going to game it better than you and they're always going to do better. If I was forced to have it, because you know, sometimes you're forced to do things by your employers, then I would take the standard natural thing that everyone would do, which I'd game the system horribly. If you had, if you could put a thing in a cup of coffee to make it feel warm, if that, if you've worked out that was a way of improving your scores, you would do it, and you wouldn't do it in a stupid way. You'd do it in quite a sophisticated way, so that ultimately you could get quite good scores and waste a huge amount of time doing so, so the productivity of our organisation goes down, not up. But the real test was what my boss, Alec Russell, the FT's news editor, would make of all of my data. Did he learn anything from it? I've learned a huge amount about you that I didn't know, Sarah. Some of it I'm not sure that I need to know. Some of it, I think, is really quite helpful to know. So in, in, particularly, in particular, the, the, the matter of energy and, um, and, and momentum, because it, it's always been clear to me, and I think to, to lots of people in journalism, that, that you want energetic reporters. And as a news editor, what you want is you want, you want journalists who are going to be racing out there, getting up in the morning thinking, what story am I going to hit today? So if, if there were a, 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 a solution to this, whereby one could suddenly find a correlation between Sarah's daily data and, and, and how she can deliver more wonderful stories, then I suppose that would be quite helpful. Th there's the whole issue of privacy and, and so on, which I'm aware is, is, uh, is, 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 is a huge matter. But I also actually think that, looking back at my own experiences, uh, that there are many occasions when I, as a, as, as a reporter in my, in my career, would have found it disastrous if, if the news editor had known exactly what I was doing. Sports science has proved that teams that really carefully gather and analyse data about their players can win a huge competitive advantage. Employers are nowhere near replicating that yet, but some are determined to try. Their success or failure will depend on whether they can persuade employees who aren't paying